Our study differs from the study that the European Commission uh, has undertaken in several respects. Uh, most importantly, uh, our analysis is tied to the data uh, much more closely. The methodology used by the Commission is, let's say, 15-20 years old, and since then the economics profession has made progress. We have models now that have not been available before and that help us interpret in a specific way the huge amount of data that we have. In our study, we use data uh, for more than 120 countries and the trade relationships between these countries. And that allows us to model much more precisely the trade costs uh, that shape the pattern of trade between these many countries. This is very important because any scenario of trade liberalization affects those trade costs. And therefore we need to know how big those trade costs are because the size of the costs shape the quantitude, quantity of the effects. And the second major difference uh, to other studies is the scenario. We go to the data again and ask the data how big are the trade effects of existing free trade agreements. We have many of them in the data. For example, the European Union is, amongst other things, a trade agreement or the North American Free Trade Association. And we have asked the data how big the trade creation is that has been uh, produced by those agreements. And we use those estimates as our scenario. In other words, we assume that what will happen between the EU and the US is of the same quantity than uh, what we have observed in the data for existing comparable trade agreements. The EU Commission goes another way. It defines a scenario. It looks, if you wish, into a crystal ball and asks what is reasonable. We go a different way. We ask what has been shown to work in the past and apply this to the question at hand. As I said before, we go to the trade data and ask, with the help of econometric methods, how big are the trade gains that we see in the data that come from existing free trade agreements. And the data are very clear. They tell us about uh, trade gains of about 90%. So, if there is an agreement between two countries, trade between these two countries is about 90% larger on average than if there were no trade agreement. And that is way bigger, of course, than uh, what other studies assume. So the answer to this apparent puzzle simply is that free trade agreements are not at all only about tariffs. They are importantly about what we call non-tariff barriers. And these are the things that uh, uh, come in the form of regulatory barriers, different standards that are required to access different markets. They may also relate to uncertainty and many, many other things. And it turns out that those non-tariff barriers are way more important than tariffs themselves. There is uh, a lot of consensus about this. The, the EU Commission knows this, but their study uh, goes a different way in dealing uh, with these non-tariff barriers. We see that existing trade agreements have created a lot of additional trade. And we also know that this cannot come from the elimination of tariffs because those tariffs that we still have today are so small. That means a huge amount of trade creation that we see in the data must come from an elimination of non-tariff barriers.